Welcome back everybody. Let's dig into some more aspects of our fitness plan. Things you can apply and how they apply to you and why they're so important. We've talked a great deal about our cardio, about our aerobic activity, and now we're going to dig into muscular strength and endurance. So here's our introduction and let's talk about some of these definitions. Only a few decades ago many people people associated muscular strength development solely with sports performance. So a lot of the focus was just on athletes and sports and our muscular strength. But now the focus is completely different and it's important for everybody, whether you are an athlete or not, whether you, it doesn't matter, woman, uh, male, it doesn't matter, it's important for everybody. With a regular strength training program, a person can reduce their body fat, they can increase their lean muscle mass, and burn calories more efficiently. So like I said, it's beneficial for everybody. One of the biggest challenges health professionals face in the constant inundation of truth is about muscle strength and endurance is exercise programs. When you exercise, you burn more calories than when you are sedentary or when you are still pretty much not active. Therefore, you start to lose weight, provided your food intake remains the same. So what that means there is when you start to exercise, as long as you don't eat more calories, as long as the calories that you are spending out exercising are more than what you're taking in, you're going to lose weight. But muscular strength will aid in losing weight as well as losing proper weight you're going to lose body fat and increase the lean muscle mass. Many times when you just exercise aerobically and don't implement muscu muscular strength, you lose fat as well as lean muscle mass. And we want to keep that lean muscle mass because it is beneficial for our bodies. So let's go over some definitions. Muscular strength or muscle strength. This is the amount of force that can be exerted by a muscle group for one movement or repetition. So muscle strength, remember, one movement or one repetition, okay? It's the amount of force that can be exerted. Then there's muscle endurance, and this is the ability of a muscle group to maintain a continuous contraction or repetition over a period of time. So endurance, right, over time, continuous. Muscle power is defined as how fast a person can lift a heavy object. So muscle power is how fast. It's not the force that can be exerted by a muscle group, it's how fast a person can lift a heavy, heavy job object. And then there's conditioning, and this is the development of high levels of skeletal muscle strength and endurance, and high levels of cardiorespiratory endurance. So conditioning is combining all of them together. And here's some terminology for weightlifting. Repetition is the first, or a rep is a common way to describe that. And this is the, the number of times a movement is performed. So many times a rep will be a set of a 10. Um, that's how many times a movement is performed. And then there's a set. So you got your repetition and then your set. A set is a group of repetitions. So you do three sets of 10 repetitions. Does that make sense? So repetition is a time allotted of a specific movement or exercise. So I'm going to do three sets of 10 repetitions. So it's the amount of repetitions is a set. And then there's overload and this is described as performing more exercise than you are accustomed to. Very careful with overload and what you're doing. It is going to be very specific to what you're doing but we don't want to do too much overloading. Progression means one must gradually over time overload the muscle system in order to make gains. So you are going to overload it. You want to overload a little bit, not to the point that you're avoiding safety, but you need to overload a little bit or else you will never progress. And you want to continually progress to get stronger, um, those muscles to be stronger, leaner, 
better endurance, that conditioning that we're talking about. So that's progression as you gradually go over time. Duration is another terminology to remember. It's the time spent in performing the exercise routine. So you're going to have maybe a 15 minute routine that has sets and repetitions in it. But the duration is really just the time for that exercise routine. Frequency is how often a person should work out. So we've talked about frequency three to five times a week. That's how many times a person should work out to get the results you're looking for and to stay healthy. Rest is defined as the period of time between sets or workouts or exercise muscle groups. So there should be rest in between your muscle group where you're working out in sets or workout so I mean rest is pretty explanatory of what that is and then concentric describes the part of the exercise in which the muscle contracts and becomes shorter so if you are lifting with your arms a barbell up the concentric is when you lift the barbell up to your chest so those muscles your biceps are shortening as you pull it up Eccentric describes the part of the body which the muscle group contraction causes lengthening. So this is the opposite. When it's lengthening um, is when you're going to find the eccentric of the muscle group or muscle fiber. The intensity is the, expressed as a percentage of one's own maximum strength levels or maximum endurance levels. It's used to determine the amount of weight used during a set or exercise. So the intensity is your own level. Okay. And then there's your effort, which defines how hard one should push oneself. Don't confuse effort with intensity. All right, the intensity is what is your maximum strength. Effort is one is how hard you should push yourself. And really, those two definitely take time to understand where you are and what you need to be doing and you are your own coach, you will know. You'll feel your body and understand that as you continue to work out and apply these terminology into your exercise. So you're thinking, well, why should I really lift weights? I'm, at, I'm doing my running, I'm doing my biking. I'm actually losing weight and feeling good about myself. Of, these are the reasons why, a few of the reasons why. One is to avoid muscle loss. We, I kind of touched on that earlier, but adults who do not strength train or lift weights, they lose approximately 3 to 5% of muscle every decade. Although endurance exercise improves your cardiovascular, which is very, very important, it does not prevent the loss of muscle. So I talked about you may be losing weight, and we just want to make sure you're losing proper weight. We want to lose the fat and not our lean muscle mass. It also avoids a me metabolic rate reduction. So because muscle is active tissue, muscle loss is accompanied by a reduction in our resting metabolic rate. The average adult experiences 2 to 5% reduction in metabolic rate every decade of life. So our metabolic rate, what is that? That means it's slowing down your metabolic rate so your body is going to gain weight easier because your metabolism is slowing down. The active muscle tissue as you lift helps that so your metabolism will stay higher which will help you lose weight better. It will increase your muscle mass because most adults do not perform strength exercise they need to first replace the muscle tissue that has been lost through an activity. So it does increase that muscle mass, which is very important as well. And then it increases the metabolic rate as we talked about. It will increase the percentage of losing calories because you have that muscle tissue to help along with that. Two more reasons here is it reduces your body fat. And, it, and that's what we want. We want it to reduce body fat and not the lean mass. Great reason there. And it actually helps. It will increase the burn of calorie as you lift weights. And it increases your bone mineral density or the BMD. 
and the effects of progressive resistance exercise are similar for muscle tissue and bone tissue so it's not just dealing with muscles the same training stimulus that increases muscle proteins also increase bone proteins and mineral content so it's going deeper than just our muscles we think we're just working our muscles but it's also strengthening our bones as well and as we age our bones tend to weaken automatically so strength training is very important to strengthen those bones and keep them strong for where they are now so let's set up a program we've applied aerobics we focused on cardiorespiratory system let's set up a, a program for you that you can be aware of now remember aerobic exercises they don't cause overexertion on muscle groups and so they can be done more often when we lift weights or do things like this we need to make sure that we're doing it no more than two to three times a week okay so intensity refers we refers to the degree of overload we've talked about this duration is the amount and frequency is the number of times per week so we're gonna put all these three together think of your intensity refers to the degree of your overload we don't want to overload it too much remember that we want to feel a little sore but that we can keep going okay so figure out the intensity where you need to be and then figure out how long you need to be doing it per exercise that's going to be different for each person some may be able to go a little bit longer some may be a little bit shorter and that's fine because each of you will set it at your own pace and know how long you need to be doing it and then the number of times per week don't do anything more than two to three times a week so implement it into the cardio but no more than two to three times a week let's discuss the order of exercise and recovery now exercise large muscle groups before your small ones okay large muscle groups are going to be your thighs or your hamstrings or your quadriceps your biceps your triceps on your arms these are the major muscle groups your chest muscles so work the big muscle groups or the large muscle groups before you start focusing on the smaller ones and then arrange your strength training exercises so that success that you're successful okay and that it's minimal effect to muscle groups that were just trained previously so let's talk about that in our own terms you want to focus on one muscle group or like your legs for example on one of your weight training sessions and then when you go to the next weight training session take a break with your legs you don't want to work them out every day you will then go to your upper body and work your arms and your chest muscles back muscles and, and so forth so make sure that you are moving throughout the body as well and not doing the same muscle groups every time you want to give them rest in between each one allow a minimum of 48 hours between strength exercises this is again goes back to the two to three times a week make sure that you're at your own intensity and that the frequency is right you don't want to overdo this group it will cause strain on muscles and can cause harm unlike aerobic that does not cause that strain and can be done over and over again this needs to be done in very good balance so be aware of that and apply that strength training also has an effect on your body composition and your metabolism now you may think that you're just burning calories when you do aerobic but you're going to burn calories during aerobic and strength training okay but the biggest impact on weight loss or weight maintenance is an increased metabolism and that metabolism comes from that muscle so it will the muscle tissues help with that metabolism to increase it so weightlifting is huge increasing that metabolism is going to help you maintain the weight you want and need or lose the weight that you want and need then there's strength training it also increases the lean muscle mass in your body and additional lean muscle mass requires more calories to burn both during exercise and throughout the rest of your day so not only when you're working out but throughout the whole rest of your day it actually is eating more 
more fat. Think of it like a little Pac-Man. Muscle is like a Pac-Man. It gobbles up lots of calories to maintain itself, unlike fat, which requires almost no calories to exist. So it's like a little Pac-Man going around eating those calories that will help you lose weight. Lean muscle mass, it cannot be maintained or increased with aerobic activity alone. Without strength training, an adult will lose approximately 1% of their muscle mass per year after the age of 30. After 30, it really decreases, and it's important to make sure you maintain that muscle mass as we've seen with the major benefits that it provides. The more muscle you have, the more calories your body will burn when you are doing absolutely nothing. How great is that? So you're getting benefits throughout the entire day from just weight training alone. Now there's a couple myths and protein is needed, but one of the biggest misconceptions associated with resistant training and muscle growth is the idea that you need tons of prote protein in order to strengthen and build those muscles. You should consume approximately 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So you need to know your body weight on this and apply it into kilograms. But this is how much you should be eating. For example, a person that weighs 175 pounds should consume about 64 to 84 grams of protein per day. And when you look on labels, it will tell you how much protein is in it. So be aware of that. Protein is great and it is gonna replenish those muscles and you need that but you don't need as much as what people truly believe. Eating a balanced meal is the best way. Pre and post workout nutrition, now this really depends on your intensity and what you're looking to do, but it is important that you fuel your body appropriately. Carbohydrates are fundamental for strength training because unlike protein, carbohydrates are readily stored in your muscles for fuel during exercise so they're in there giving it the fuel it needs and then research also clearly supports post-workout nutrition is as equally important as in the successful strength training as a, a diet so make sure that you're getting appropriate food before and after and carbohydrates are huge with that as well as protein but use these recommendations of how much you should be eating each day so that you can feed your body and replenish the body the way it's supposed to. Does it always have to be weights? I want to talk about this. You don't always need a weight room. You think I can't get to a weight room, I can't get to a gym. It doesn't have to always be weights, but there does have to be some sort of resistance, okay? And that can even be gravity. You can do things on the ground where you hold your body in place. That's strength training. It just needs resistance, some sort of resistance to require those muscles to work. Not like this picture on the right that says, are you going to resist training all day, okay? not that kind of resistance when your mother asks you to get up and do something but something that is going to work those muscle groups okay girls I want to focus on you for a minute here look at these two pictures down here we're going to talk about this and what really strength training is for women many times we're worried about what it's going to do for us but let's face some facts here First, it does not cause muscle hypertrophy as in men. The hypertrophy is when the muscles get large and they bulk up. That does not happen with women when they build. If they are doing that, that is because it's some sort of drug induced, okay? They are using something, a supplement to help that happen. It actually changes your body composition. It can lead to reduction in your inches but not your body weight. So you may feel like you're starting to look better, but you're not losing weight. That's it. That's okay because it causes for that lean body and you'll lose inches. 
in your body. So the best way to assess yourself is how are my genes fitting? Okay, not necessarily the scale, but how are my genes fitting? Are they feeling looser? Are my shirts feeling looser? That's how you'll tell. And it's also going to give you a, a improved body appearance that can be achieved really only through strength training. Aerobics will help us lose weight, but strength training will tone the body. So you don't have to worry about being bulky or large. You're still going to have that womanly figure that we are all striving for. Now gender and age does play a part in this. You guys are young and active and I just really want you to be aware that it's going to depend on you individually. The amount of muscle mass we have, it decreases as we age. So be aware of that. Create a plan that will be positive for you that you can implement and continue to build that muscle mass and increase your metabolism and, in, and make a habit of your life that will help you as you age. Here are some do's and don'ts that I'd like to focus on for a minute. If you are lifting weights uh, in the gym, like these pictures show here, you need to make sure that you have a spotter. And a spotter is somebody that can help you pick those weights up and put them back in place. You need to keep your back straight when lifting. Make sure you have proper form when you are lifting and it all depends on what you decide to do. So whatever the workout you decide, whatever lifts you decide, make sure you're getting proper instruction first. There's a lot of research you can find that will show you proper lifting movements. So that's very important that you have proper fundamentals and, and technique as well that goes along with it. You need to wear appropriate shoes with good traction to help you lift these weight um, and make sure your equipment is in good condition. Okay, All these things make sure you're doing before you start your weight training and your lifting. Now there's some don'ts that I want you to be aware of as well. You don't want to breathe fast or hold your breath when you lift. Okay, This is called hyperventilating and you don't want to do that. You want to take good slow breaths as you lift um, as make sure that it's not hyperventilating. Don't continue to lift weights if you're feeling pain. Okay, Stop the painful exercise for a few days or try it with less weight. If it's causing too much pain you either need to pause and take a break for a little while or try less weight. Don't exercise any set of muscle group more than three times a week. We've talked about this. This is important. Do not go over three times a week. You may think, oh, if I do it more, I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to look better. Don't. It's very important that you stay with that three times a week. Don't cheat on your technique to lift heavier weights. If you have good form and you're trying to put more weight on and your technique changes, you need to stop immediately and put the heavier weights away. I promise you'll get to those heavier weights as you continue with your reps and your sets. You will increase, but don't try to overdo it. Your technique is always what comes first. Don't lift heavy weights without a spotter. We talked about that. And don't lift uh, more than you know you can lift safely. Review this list over and over again before you start your program because it's very, very important and applying it into your workout program will help you be successful and that's what we're going for.